hello everybody out there this is Garrett here with 11 bang bang and today we have something kind of special we have the Western Field model M895 so what this is is the Ward's Western Field version of the Mossberg model 402 and basically it's the same exact gun as the Mossberg but about 150 to 200 dollars cheaper now if you look at this thing real close you'll see that it's chipped out here the wood stock is it's chipped over here I've actually done a lot of looking around on the internet and it seems to be a very common problem with these guns. As a matter of fact, finding a stock that does not have that piece of wood chipped out is really hard to do. Now, like I said, on the Mossberg gun, it's actually a little nicer. It has a better grade of wood. Usually they have a pistol grip cap here. But what we're dealing with here is a 22 lever action with an enclosed hammer and it's really kind of a cool little gun now the thing about this gun is i actually bought this one at an auction here seven or eight years ago i traded it to my uncle because it wasn't working very well he had a marlin shotgun that wasn't working very well and so we just kind of traded out broken guns and he wound up giving this to his daughter and uh, she just brought it to us recently my cousin did because it's still not working very well so what I did was I ran it through the ultrasonic cleaner and got just a ton of lead fouling and gunk out of it. Took it clear apart, stripped it down, cleaned it. Everything seems to be working. It seems to have a little trouble feeding certain shells. And those shells tend to be the Winchesters or the Remington Thunder bolts or something like that. But what I'm going to try today is running CCI shells through it because what I found with most of these old... Uh, JC Higgins or Ward's Western Field guns and stuff like that a lot of times they will run CCI's whereas for some reason they don't run the other shells but let's load it up but now these are Winchester uh, this is just a Winchester 36 green hollow point copper plated and what I've noticed is these guns don't like these shells that are just bought in bulk boxes like this I think it's because not all of the rounds are perfectly straight in the shell because they've been shook and chipped around whereas a lot of times CCI shells in these boxes and I'll show you if I can get it out a lot of times these boxes will have these shells like this that are actually in an individual holder and they're not just beating against each other all the time so anyway I can tell you right now a few pros and cons of this gun it's a lever gun that has a safety and that's always kind of been a no-go for me but on this in this case it's absolutely necessary because we have no exposed hammer which also means you cannot decock this gun without firing it so you know there's a few odds and ends right there that are kind of strikes against it but for not very expensive I think I gave hundred and two or three dollars for this 22 it's been a few years ago you get a pretty good little plinker and let's see how it's going to operate now i won't be surprised if it doesn't feed all of these winchester shells but let's just go over here and see what we can't do okay guys so when you go ahead and cock this gun one of the first things you'll notice is this has a very short lever throw so that probably allows for faster shooting but you do need to kind of be authoritative with this lever or else you may not get the shells at least on this one where you want them every time no hammer, which is an odd thing for me on a lever gun, but let's pump some into that Ghost Cowboy Bob. And we're on safety. <laughs> safety on a lever gun, something I'll never get used to. Ah. Okay, guys. This lever. Uh, is not my favorite lever it has a really short sharp area in it and the lever itself is not very wide and I actually at this very moment can't pull my hand out eh, because my wedding string is stuck inside the lever that's how narrow it is I don't know how I'm gonna get it out I have to get to the front there we go well only one way to fix that guys sorry honey all right now like I said very narrow, very small lever port in this gun. But, but we haven't had any failures yet to eject, so I'll try real quick. And that was all I had. Now, normally I would decock this gun, but there's no hammer to decock. So literally, if you don't want to be loading it with a firing pin back, 
you actually have to dry fire it which is not something you want to do on most 22s but there's really no way to get around it on this particular gun all right let's load it up again all right so let's see just how many shells this model m1895 or marlin 402 will actually hold let's count them down one two three 13, four, uh oh guys, it's not an assault rifle, 14, now, if I was to lever one into the chamber, I could have loaded 15, but I don't like to do that because there's no decocking, no ability to decock the hammer, and if you lever one into the chamber, it's on fire. I mean, you could put it on safe, I guess, but I still don't like that. And it'll be on fire with your hand up here around the tube, around the muzzle end. I don't like that. So we're going to just say this gun holds 14, which is one less than the Henry's we've been running up to this point. That first round. Uh-oh, there it was, right there, guys. First time I tried to do it on that one. I have a feeling that's just not going to run these bulk round ammunition very well. I have two other 22s that are department store 22s. None of them actually like to run this bulk ammunition. So let's uh, let's clean this out and we'll be right back. All right, so we cleared that jam. Let's try this again. And another one. All right, let's try again, but not run it fast. Let's try just running it smooth. Nope, she didn't eject that one either. All right, guys, I'm not even gonna attempt to run back through that. Now, I have an issue. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on safe, but since there's no decocker here, my hammer is cocked on an empty chamber. I just checked it, I just saw it. It is empty, the gun is on safe. Another step you have to do with a lever action that doesn't have a hammer. We're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna dump the rest of these Winchester rounds out because I think we will just be fighting them the whole way. Now, the way this works, you always want to check it because you can have one sitting on the carrier. I'm going to go ahead and dry fire this so I know the hammer's down. All right. Guys, let's run some CCIs and see if that fixes the issue. If not, we may have to take this thing back to the drawing board and see what else we can do to it. Maybe polish the chambers. All right, guys, CCIs. These are just standard velocity lead CCIs. Let's see how they work. Fed in there pretty easy. Guys, I think that's the ticket. A lot of these old guns just like CCIs of actually any variety, mini mags, things like that, they tend to just feed. Now, just so we know that's not just a fluke, let's load 14 up and start clearing some targets. Okay, so we have 13 rounds of CCI standard velocity in this gun. Let's see if that fixes our issues. That lever does feel weird. Going for the lower target. Tell you what, she's quite a little clinker. I'm gonna go for the blue target. Still have quite a few. Let's go for the water bottle. Not close. So. All right, guys, 10 inch plate at 100 yards. 
these sites are not as fine as the Henry site or the Marlin site. And the more we go, the more this gun is jamming up. Those sights are really pretty wide at the back. Did I hit it? I'm going to have to take my earplugs out to see if I'm even hitting it. Because these CCI standard velocity rounds are pretty That's all we got today for the uh, Western Field. You gotta look at the name. Model M895. And that's just sometimes the nature of the beast with these old guns. When you get them like from auctions, places like that, first thing you gotta do is clean them. Like I said, the cleaning has probably took out 80% of the issues this gun has had. Uh, the CCIs have helped a lot. But I believe at this point we are on to the next step, which is going to be new extractor, new extractor spring and probably polishing the chamber but we'll do all that we'll do a chapter two i hope you guys have enjoyed this as always trust in god keep your powder dry thanks for watching bye